and Ed, live from New York. We're back. We're back again. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you. And uh, we're broadcasting live from New York. Hopefully in a minute here, it'll get it'll get going. Um, meanwhile, um, I wanted today's episode is sponsored by Arvix Web Hosting and Dropbox and Mountain Rose Herbs. So. Thank you. You can chat with us live or give us feedback or questions during the live taping of our show in several ways. You can join our live chat room via Gmail chat, Google Talk, or via Twitter at Reply by sending us an email or even text message or SMS. You can even call in live via Skype or plain old telephone. All the instructions are in the left column of uh, the website at breadtv.com, B-R-E-D-T-V.com. So, um, and even if you're not watching live, we want to hear from you anyway. You can send us an email or any message, any of those ways, 24/7, and you can actually join us. Um, you know, during the live show, we'll be able to read your comments if it's live, or uh, we'll read them on the next day, as um, you know, as we uh, for the next show that we do. Make sense? Yep. Okay. <laughs> cool. Well, visiting, uh, joining us today live is. All the way from London, England, UK, one of the hottest DJs in the world right now, and our dear, dear friend, and first runner-up for hottest gay, no, hottest, well, maybe gay, hottest gay guy in Great Britain, <laughs> DJ Robbie D, of his website, djrobbyd.com. Are you there, Robbie? I am. Hey, there you welcome. are. Welcome. Welcome, hey, welcome. Hey, how you good? How you doing? <laughs> good. Great. How is, how is everything in... Good old London the town. UK. Oh, it's doing good, apart from the weather, as always. <laughs> apart from the weather. <laughs> yeah, you guys have been having wacky, wacky weather. We're having a gorgeous day. Oh, indeed. Day. We're having a gorgeous day here. <laughs> we're, we're having a cold front, actually. It went from 90 degrees yesterday to 60 degrees, or it's 70 now, but... Exactly. It's wow. nice. There, I finally got used to it. I guess you can say the same. Can you see the chat room over there? Mm-hmm. I, <laughs> we have a little challenge. Once we start taping, then I have to fiddle with it until I get Ustream working. And then, uh, yeah, let's see, if, let's see the chat room and see if you got the video over there, but make sure it's muted. So anyway, mm-hmm. <laughs> you got it? Mm-hmm. Where's the Where's the video? Let me see Ustream. No, I don't have the video. Okay, yeah, bring it up. Make sure you got video. So anyway, um, so you're headed here. Soon to New York. I sure am. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> you counting down the days? Oh yes. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Really looking forward to it. That's cool. What are your plans for uh, when you're? I know you're coming and you're staying with us. So, but where are you? Uh, what What all have you planned that you haven't told us about? Uh, well, I'd like to go and check out the gay scene, uh, the clubbing scene. Mm-hmm. Uh, as you know, uh, over here in the UK, I like to host my own gay events. Uh, I host one of the biggest gay events in Essex. Uh, so it's always good to kind of get some ideas from you guys and then steal them and take them back to the UK. <laughs> <laughs> you mean from New York or New York clubs, right? Or US in general. <laughs> the US in general. Uh, what, so what's, oh, yeah. um, have you uh, made any contacts here that you're going to see while you're here? Uh, I've made a few friends on Facebook. Um, I've not messaged them about meeting them up with them yet. But uh, a few guys at Splash, uh, Mr. Black's in New York. Uh, there's yeah. a few venues, uh, but I'm sure you guys will show me about all the new stuff that's going on over there. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I'm sure you'll have plenty of time for that. <laughs> cool. So <laughs> the um, click on the chat room there and see if we've got the chat room up. I want to see the video. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to make sure our, our Ustream is working. So, um, anyway. There we are. You know what I wanted to ask you? Okay, good. We can see. Now click on the chat room. Let's see if, the, if it, it's working. Chat, right there. The tab that says chat on the right. Yeah. There we go. All right. Now we can watch the chat room. So <laughs> if you're on Ustream, you see us and you can hear us. Type into the chat room and we'll be able to read your comments right here on the air. Keep an eye on Live. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're getting, we're getting the bugs worked out. 
You know, the do you use in your um, mixing and all that? Do you use a mixer, an actual hardware mixer? Oh, uh, sure. Uh, a lot of DJs in London now are starting to use laptops, mm-hmm. but um, I kind of class that as a virtual to DJ virtual. Virtual. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, basically, a laptop cheats, doesn't it? With your own CDs, it's a bit more complicated, more challenging. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So. And and when you um, when you I mean. See, the reason I'm asking is because for our show, we're trying to figure out a way to, if I, if we wanted to use lavalier microphones, the kind that clip on your collar, you know, when we have guests mm-hmm. sitting here, um, we're, right now we're using one studio condenser microphone, and we, we you know, it works great, it sounds great as long as we kind of lean into it and we're like four to six inches away, as it says, right from the front and all that. Right. But if we wanted to have multiple microphones, either multiple studio microphones or multiple lavalier microphones or a combination, they're USB, um, sure. I'm told that we would have to have a hardware mixer, so we'd plug in each of these microphones into this mixer thing, and then... They'd all go into that, which is the switches and mixing and all that, and then there'd be one USB that would go plug into the computer, so the computer would record it and stream it and all that with just one USB. Is that is that what you have? Is that what you use? Uh, we only use the... Well, yeah, we do. We have a mixer. It depends on how many things we have plugged into it, like the CD decks, your record decks. So you've got mm-hmm. a channel per, you know, mm-hmm. one for the deck, one for the CD, one for CD2, and one for... You know, so are they typically uh, USB or are they analog or what kind of signal? Uh, wow, well, <laughs> you can do anything, right? You have so many different mixes. Oh, okay, okay. okay. I'm to, learning about that. Answer. Do I mean like? Um, okay, well, anyway, that's what we're trying to figure out. So, if anybody in the audience is an expert on this, I mean, I'm not a musician, or you know, I'm not even, you know, my background is not even in uh, in this sort of audio. So, what we want, I guess, what we need, we're using Flash. Uh, this program called Adobe Flash Media Encoder, and it needs pretty much one input for audio. So, um, the USB microphone works great with just one, but we want to have multiple. So, I'm told we need to have a mixer, probably. Um, with USB microphones, it would make sense to have USB inputs into a mixer and then one USB going into the computer. So, anyway, if anybody knows about that, get get back to us and give us some feedback on that. So, so. tell us about what your gigs are, what you've been doing lately with um, with the music scene. Well, uh, well, I've left London now. I'm purely concentrating on the southeast. Oh. Uh, Basically, as you know, I run one of the biggest gay nights in Essex. Uh, gathers around 800 to 1,200 on a bank holiday. Um, what's what's that that moment, what's, what's it called? Name? It's called. It's called G Sundays. G Sundays. G Sundays. And that, is that the website also? Sure. It's just the letter. Yeah, G- we have a website. Uh, G S U N D A Y S. Sundays. Dot com with an S. Okay. That's right. Dot com or dot co uk. Both. Both. Okay, so it's easy. Oh, smart. So gsundays.com works. Okay, cool. And how's that going? It's been good? It, it's been awesome, actually. Um, lately, we've had some great events on. Obviously, we have the x Factor, and you have it over there. Uh, yeah. Lately, X- I've been booking all the X Factor artists. And X they've been Factor. Singing on stage. We don't. I don't think we have. Do yeah, we? I've heard of it. I just don't know. What we it have is. X. I mean, I don't think the we have it here. Thing? No, 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 no. X Factor is in. Is you have it, but we don't have it. I think it's uh, like uh, America's Got Talent. Britain's Got Talent, isn't it? Yeah. 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 It's like the same yeah. thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. But we don't yeah. have it here. But that's oh. really huge in the UK. But it's kind of yeah, like yeah, America's yeah. Got Talent. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. I thought there's sure. a sporting uh, event that's called X Factor. There is? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, that's different. No, <laughs> that's this different, is like yeah. America's Got Talent, Britain's Got Talent. Isn't it like a direct competitor of Britain's Got Talent? Uh, well, as you know, Simon Cowell, uh, he um, launched Britain's Got Talent. We do have that over here. It's just yeah. finished, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, a brilliant gymnast that's called Spellbound won it. Mm. Uh, X Factors uh, coming up in the next few months on TV. Uh, mm-hmm. I think they're auditioning to that soon. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else have we got coming up? Uh, Big Brother, the Big final, brother huge. the last one. <laughs> <laughs> that's huge over there, too. Yeah. That's, that's, oh, that's yes. what they love. X Factor, Big Brother. Those are the that's biggest. Right. What about Lost? Did you, do you guys follow Lost? That's huge here. Uh, yeah, it is, as far as it is huge over here as well. But yeah. 
different. I'm not very keen on that myself. <laughs> okay, yeah. I, call, I, I say it's perfectly named because every time I watch it, I'm lost. If you don't see every episode, I'm just yeah. completely lost. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I'm more a Glee fan. Oh yeah, really? I love Glee. Oh, Glee. Yes, Glee is awesome. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> we were just watching this morning the the um what's her name? The the lady who plays the, the coach. The coach. Oh, she's she's like the therapist on Two and a Half Men, the therapist, and she's right. the coach, the, the the girl's uh coach on Glee. What I don't know her name, what's a look look it up there. But yeah. anyway, she did a uh video spoof of an iPhone ad, you know, where they, it's like, I'm, I'm mad. Oh, I'm just, yes, I've seen it for the iPhone phone. It? Yeah, the, for the iPhone 4, exactly, and it's hysterical. I love that. What's yeah, her name? It's it's very very, good. Because uh, she's, uh, you know, ob- they don't actually mention Android, but it's obviously Android. It's like, you know, I love that. My favorite line was, yeah. um, oh, I miss the 90s. <laughs> like, you know, wow, does it have copy and paste yet? <laughs> her name is her, Jane Lynch is her name. Jane Lynch, that's her. She's so hist- what a name, Lynch. They say you live up or down to your name, so she's <laughs> she's boy, she lynches you with that tongue. What a tongue like a sword, that lady. <laughs> Young lady. She's <laughs> And so you're doing the G Sundays, which is every week, every Sunday, right? That's right. Every I'm purely concentrating that at the moment. Uh, as I'm putting in a lot more money towards it, bigger acts. I mean, we've got a, a, a huge girl group called uh, the Saturdays. Uh, they're performing in September. A huge what group? A girl mm-hmm. group? Oh, okay. You mean what do you mean a girl a girl act or? An yeah, event? yeah, Maybe. singers. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're a big girl group out over here. They've just been touring and they're going to be performing at my club. What are they on, called? Uh, the twelfth of September. What's the name? The Saturdays. Oh, the that's the name. I thought that's what it was. The Saturdays. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And they're from the UK? Yeah. They are indeed. <laughs> and what kind of music? Yeah, they're, uh, uh, they're very pop, commercial. Uh, they've got a huge fan base in the um, gay community. I mean, they've just been touring a few concerts, charity concerts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, oh. um, it should be really good. Now, the, when you say you're concentrating on the Southeast, is that is that is Essex in the Southeast? It sure is. I mean, Essex is a big place. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say because I thought it was north. I mean, east. I mean, I thought, all mixed up. I thought it was east, but, but it's like east and south of London. <laughs> but you're not talking about all the way down to Brighton. That's not. No, no, no. No, okay. That's Sussex. That's okay. right there. Oh, right. that's right. That's right. So basically, when you say the southeast, you mean Essex, and that's a huge area. Yeah, that's where you're fo- focusing right. on. Okay, where, as so. opposed to before, you were in London and Brighton Beach. So now you're so everywhere. <laughs> you're so busy with these huge venues, these huge events that you don't have time really to to do. <laughs> you you were spread so thin, traveling everywhere, right? <laughs> that's be- right. I mean, um, as when I first started um, going out in Essex, I mean, the scene was quite poor. Uh, so I just wanted to give them what mm-hmm. what I gave London and into mm-hmm. a smaller town, mm-hmm. and it's worked. Yeah. So yeah, I and mean, I it's, say um, you were, you, at one point you everyone were knows you, about me, and everyone knows. Sorry, I was going to say at one point weren't you in like a whole bunch of the top ten big biggest clubs in London? Like what was that's how right? Many, how I many mean, clubs were you in in London uh, at the peak? At you know when you were at that's the right. Mall? I was at Shadow Lounge, Heaven, DTPM. I mean, but. Over the time, I mean, they started shutting down. Um, you guys may have the same issue where people stick to their one club. I mean, you have Flash, uh, Splash, sorry. Right. And I mean, um, we have Heaven, you know, mm-hmm. which um, just got taken over by GAY. And I mean, um, everyone goes there and the other clubs have struggled, you see, so they're shut. So, which is a shame. Yeah, mm-hmm. that is. Because of the economy. But I, I, I keep That's hearing right. everybody in business uh, that I talk to is telling me basically the same thing that's kind of it's kind of like hit bottom so like uh like an alcoholic or something the economy has hit bottom and now it's in recovery and it's still bad but it's clickety clinking back up the tracks it seems to be improving slowly yeah well any friends i actually i've my friends are in the bar say that the this is because everybody's so depressed they're drinking yeah kind of depressed and want to just (laughs) You know, I don't. I don't think the bar out. business actually gets hurt much because people drink. They always drink, whether it's good or bad. Good well, times or bad, they always drink. <laughs> That's like the drug business. You know, it's like it is a drug. 
Mm-hmm. So they're gonna they're always gonna be busy. But I think the luxury things like vacations and travel and things like that tell you more about it, don't you think? Well, over here in the U- UK, I mean, we've get a lot of binge drinking. I mean, the younger underage children trying to drink, trying to get onto booze, right. uh, the booze. Sorry. Booze as in alcohol. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. But, um, I mean, government has started to put prices up of alcohol, so less people coming out, spending more. I mean, because they can't afford it. Right. Mm. Well, hmm. I guess that's the flip side of that. That's one way to control it. Yeah, yeah I mean, um, just recently on the news, they've decided they want to have a set price on alcohol in shops. So you're looking at about no less than $10, $12 a drink, you know, and no cheaper, cheaper than that. You That's mean, like, you, uh, you mean talking about pounds or, pounds or dollars? That's in a, uh, pounds. 12 pounds for a drink? Yeah. Yeah, they want to kind of stop selling single, single drinks and go on to, you know, selling crates, you know. Wow. You know, stick into that so kids can't, you know, afford them. That's interesting. Oh, An interesting wow. strategy. So isn't 12 pounds, is it still like, uh, what is that? Is that twenty dollars? Yeah, about twenty. That's around twenty-four, twenty-six dollars for one drink. No, that would be like a you know a box. You know they're not selling single drinks anymore. A box? How many drinks are in a box? Usually four. Oh, okay. Oh, so if they just sell, well, kids are gonna get around that. They just chip in. They all chip in their money and buy oh, a yeah. box. Probably. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, like, they, yeah. can't, they can't buy cigarettes, they get their uncle, you know, or the, the guy on the corner to give them... That's just the government's <laughs> excuse to yeah. tax everyone. Maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. <laughs> that always that always. In helps. the guise of, you know, let's prevent the young people from drinking. So one thing we're really looking forward to is, uh, I know we're, we're planning to go to Cedar Point, which is in all the, you know, I don't know if you know, but in all the amusement park magazines, which I don't know really how many amusement park magazines there are, but whatever. They're always rated the best amusement park in the whole world. They they call it the roller coast because it's famous for its roller coasters, but they have all kinds of rides and all that. But um, have you been there? Did we go there before? No. No, we no, haven't been there, there yet. Okay. Well, I've been, I'm from Ohio, Columbus, Ohio originally, so we've been going, my family's been going since I was three, like almost every year, and it's it's so much fun. So we're really looking forward to that taking you guys to Cedar Point. That's going to be a blast. Mm-hmm. I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> to bring your sunscreen or your parasol or something. Mm-hmm. It's going to be, you know, long lines and sun. Where I want to, Hopefully we can go during the weekdays, Monday through Friday, because then we'll avoid those. The lines will be like 20% as long as the weekend. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be a blast. Yeah, that'll be fun. Actually, a friend of ours met the CEO of Cedar Fair, which is the company that owns Cedar Par- Cedar Point and a whole bunch of amusement parks. So uh, maybe she can give us a, a hookup and we can, uh, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what the CEO is going to do. Maybe he'll, tre- he'll give us the celebrity treatment mm-hmm. because we're coming with, we're bringing DJ Robbie D from London mm-hmm. and we'll get, you know, ahead of all the lines or something. Mm-hmm. We'll get anything a free, would be good. A free balloon and a teddy bear, anything, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you guys over there do like the queue jump up bus? You know where you can go in the front of the queue. You know you can get really spans, etc. Oh no, they don't. Well, they in don't. Disney, they don't they sell do that. that. But oh, maybe at Disney. But no, not at Cedar. Well, Cedar Point. The last time we were there, what what you could do is you could go and it wasn't a. It was free, but you go there and like schedule a time. Like you could say, I'm going to be here at two fifteen, and they would give you a ticket for two fifteen. All oh, right. And then you go back at that particular time, and then you you don't get to the head of the line, but you you get into a shorter line. Right. I don't sure. know. It's kind of hokey. Well, they be do cool that the fast ticket. Yeah. A fast, yeah, like a fast pass or something. And uh, yeah. I know Universal Studios and maybe Disney, they do uh, one where you they give you an assigned time or something like that. I think that's, that's the same thing. Point. Yeah. But do they do you buy them over there in Orlando? Yeah, everything's oh, yeah, extra. Yeah, everything's extra. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't think they don't charge you anything for Cedar Point when you do they. Oh, they just have so many and then they run out, right? Remember? I haven't been there in years. Yeah, so. it's been a while. It'll be fun. We'll be, yeah, for we're sure. looking forward to it. Yeah. Really Last time you were here, we went. You guys went to um, Six Flags, mm-hmm. which I haven't. I've never That's been right. to. But I think you're gonna you're gonna really love Cedar Point. It's a blast. For sure. <laughs> I really, really look forward to it. Yes. Yeah. 
Yes, yes, yes. And are you gonna buy more uh, Muppets? <clears throat> <laughs> Mine's in the cupboard. <laughs> Last time Robbie was here, he went to where did you go? Was it did you get that in Times Square? I know. Uh, FAO Shorts. Oh, FAO Shorts. FAO Shorts yeah. And it mupp like the Muppet puppets from the Sesame Street style mupp, pup, Muppet puppets were all the rage, and are they still all the rage in the UK? Yeah, yeah, they're still popular. <laughs> yeah, the tourists are all over there. I love that video you made. He made it. He used a. Would you use a camera phone or a flip camera or something? Some kind of vi- a video camera, and he made a yeah, video of himself would... talking to the puppets in Times Square and stuff. That was great. Yeah, I want. Great we montage. wanted you to. Um, oh yeah, we need we need you to make a the montage a yeah. video montage of us. <laughs> you know, like that, like something like Mary Tyler Moore crossing the street and throwing our hat in the air. You know, something mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. acting goofy around Times Square and Central Park. Well, we'll have lots, lots of uh, very New footage. York, so that uh, we can put. Take. We have, we need a montage for the beginning of our show. Yeah, one of uh, <laughs> well, Robbie's multi-talented, uh, you know, music is just one of his passions, and uh, but he's really good at like video editing and publishing and. Uh, and then recently you have gotten into a new trade. Tell us about that, because I really haven't talked to you oh in person about it, except shared pictures and emails. My amazing cakes. Your amazing <laughs> cakes, yes. That's what you should call it. Robbie's Amazing Cakes. Well, I've been asked by loads of customers, is what's the company called? And I mean, I'm only doing it for a hobby at the moment. But the fascinating mm-hmm. thing about it is um, I'm using American ingredients. Oh, you know, yeah. I'm making American sponge cake you know, American frosting, and they you seem mean, to like it, and they're asking what these ingredients are, and I'm saying they're American, they're not British. Are they you know, the ingredients the or the recipes? It's a lot more sweet. You mean the ingredients <laughs> or the recipes? Or no, both? the ingredients and the recipes. I've kind of both. created my own recipes now, so they ah. taste more, you know, more lush. Yeah, because <laughs> our, our, our everything here is sweet, very, <laughs> very sweet. Every, you know, like, we our desserts are sweet. Well, that's how sugary. we like it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. We like everything to extremes in this country, for sure. I mean, I miss the soup size. I mean, they stopped that in Britain, you know, after the the film about the guy eating all the burgers and almost having a oh, heart attack. super size. <laughs> yes, right. yes, yes, that's true. Yeah, I mean, we're number one in obesity also, but, you know, hey. I mean... Burger King still do it, but nowhere else. <laughs> oh, the supersizing? Yeah. You know, whatever. You, it's blaming the restaurant for what you eat is a little bit ridiculous. It's like blaming the gun with, that you shoot yourself with. You know, come on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you get it. It's not like anybody handcuffed you and dragged you in there and put a gun to your head to eat this, you know? <laughs> so what's the most creative uh, cake you've made so far? Because I know you've made a whole bunch. Uh... The, I've made one, uh, I made a full-size Hoover. <laughs> oh, and you got to explain uh, what a Hoover is, because in, in the U.S., people barely know what that is. We know there's a president, a former president named Hoover, and there's a vacuum cleaner company. <laughs> but over there, you have, you explained it, there's a there's a, an actual vacuum cleaner model called the Hoover, and it looks like a cartoon character. So is it like yeah, that's as, right. <laughs> is it as famous as SpongeBob SquarePants would be here? <laughs> <laughs> well, you got a Helly Hoover and Henry, so and they're really Hattie? popular. Helly and Henry. Helly and Henry. See, yeah. they're even British names that we don't we don't know anything about this over here. Like, what <laughs> the hell is he talking about? I don't get it. But they're 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 characters. They look like to me. They look like a round yellow. Uh, SpongeBob character, <laughs> but they're actually vacuum cleaners made by the Hoover Vacuum Cleaner Company that look like a character. What do they dance and sing on TV commercials or what? How does people? How do people know about this? Uh, they're just so smiley. This <laughs> is so Is it just the product, or do they have TV commercials with them in it? No, it's just the product. Just the product. Everybody recognizes. Yeah, it. I've never. I mean, seen they've been around here. for years. Have you seen them? I mean, they're really popular. Uh, I might have seen pictures of it. I don't. I think, think you, he's talked to me about yeah, it. But I don't. Think, I know, but you've heard him from him. But I don't think we. I've ever seen that in the United States. It's just. A, is yeah. it? A, did they make a cartoon out of it or something? Yeah, he's no. got a smiley face on him. No, I mean, it's, it's just no, it's a who's a pipe. It's just. <laughs> it's just seeing the product on the shelf in the store. Uh-huh. I think that's. And it. it's a vacuum cleaner. Yeah. But it's one of those uh, yeah. ones with a it's long. It's like a hose. canister vacuum cleaner. Like a cleaner. canister, right? Exactly. And the one's yellow, and the one yeah, and the one's right. red or something, right? And it has it's a, a, it's a boy smiley and a girl. face on it or something. 
Only yeah. you have to be in England to get so it. So you made a, <laughs> a a life size version of which one, the boy or the girl? Uh, the boy. The, of course. Yeah, how, I mean, what it is took it? Um, <laughs> three days. <laughs> took me three that. days. Three days. Yeah. So how many? Sure how many? Is. How uh, how many cake? What recipe? Like, did you have to double, quadruple, or how many cakes uh, are in this? All in all, I think I put in. I think it was ninety-six eggs. Oh my god! Ninety-six what? Ninety-six eggs. Oh. <laughs> oh my god! Wow. And how a lot of sugar? flour and sugar. <laughs> a lot of flour and sugar. <laughs> oh, did yeah. it? Did they eat it all? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They still have they it. All. You should have lacquered it and saved it. Put it under glass and make a museum. You well, I've kind of learned a new talent as well. Um, I've copied it from America, actually. Um, you guys have rice biscuit cakes. Yeah. Yes. Call it, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I learned there's a guy in America who runs a cake store called Ace of Cakes. And, yes. I mean, he creates rice crispy cakes and covers them in ice in frosting. Ooh. So you mold from rice crispy cake. The mold is from rice crispy. Oh, nice. What do you mean? Yeah, like it's, uh, hard it's really cool. Like Rice Krispies into a mold, and then he creates a cake around that or something. A cake around it? I yeah, mean, so you think of it, if, if the head's really complicated to make, you'll make that from Rice Krispie cake and just stick it on the top, but the rest of it will be your sponge. Oh. Mm. Have you tried it? Have you tried making it? I have. It's uh, a lot more solid. You can sculpture it a lot more easier compared to sponge, because sponge just breaks off. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit more complicated. Oh my god, it's like an architectural uh, science. You need an engineering degree. That's amazing that this is something rather new for you, and you just dove right into it to make a life-size I, vacuum cleaner cake. I know. Well, I see this guy in America, and I thought I've got to do something big as well. <laughs> we right. should call it. Uh, we'll call it Robbie's Amazing Cake Service. So it, the acronym is RAX. Uh, <laughs> did you send the picture to well, the yeah, Hoover it's company? It's you guys. Sorry? Did you send any pictures to the Hoover company? Sorry, yes. Oh, yeah. The, the vacuum <laughs> no. cleaner company. You might get some business. I should do, actually. <laughs> yeah, you should. You you might also submit it to, yeah, like, uh, what is it, Guinness for the world record? You might have the world's largest vacuum cleaner cake. cake. <laughs> Maybe the <laughs> world's, that. It could be the world's <laughs> only vacuum cleaner cake. Yeah. Yeah, and why the vacuum cleaner What did again? you use for the hose? Well, just because it's a popular well, like, Oh, I didn't have it's a like, hose. I had it. Oh, you didn't have the on. hose. Well, that's not authentic. Mm-hmm. You should have put a real hose on it. No, the reason that he picked a vacuum cleaner, is, I think, to, correct me if I'm wrong, is because it's a really popular character. It's like SpongeBob, SquarePants. It's just goofy, and everybody right. knows it. So, right? Isn't that kind of the uh, reason? Well, for the adults, mums and dads, mums love it. I mean, they love that Hoover. Yeah, because they, I mean, they it's use it. So it's really bright. It's really bright. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, compared to like the other Hoovers, you know, Black Hoover, you know, quite boring. I mean, they're pink. <laughs> they're bright. Yeah, they are. Yeah. yeah they're great. The, all the rage here in vacuum cleaner is this new type of uh, technology suction system, called, and it's the Dyson. Uh, have you guys heard of that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've got them over here, but they're, they're quite expensive over here. Yeah, they're very expensive. And they're not as bright yellow. They're not pretty. No. <laughs> they roll on a ball, though. That's kind of cute. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> they, if they make it into a cartoon character, they'll sell twice as many in England. Make it into a hot dog dog or something, like a little wiener dog. <laughs> yeah. A little wiener dog dies in, and it'll, they'll, they'll double their sales. There you go. <laughs> well, speaking of sales, we, it's, we really should take a moment and thank our sponsors for, uh, for bringing us to you. Yes, and uh, <laughs> today's sponsor, um, uh, 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 let me start this. Yeah. So um, today, yeah, today's first one is Arvix Web Hosting, and we talk about Arvix all the time. Um, yeah, here, let me bring it up here. I'll show you what they look like. Uh, hang on. Okay, here it comes. You can tell this is live television. Arvix. Anyway, Arvix com. is A R V I X E. Arvix dot com, and Arvix Web Hosting is um, a phenomenal service. They uh, That's what I love about them most is their service. You can call them 24-7 and you get a live human being who speaks the same language as you, but they're very technical. They they can speak to you in normal, simple, plain English, and um, yet they are technical engineers and they can uh, fix the problem for you, do it for you, or teach you how to do it yourself. It's brilliant, brilliant service. They have phenomenal uptime and super, super reasonable prices. They have a 
a very affordable rate plan for the hosting that gives you unlimited bandwidth, unlimited storage, and an unlimited number of .com domain names or .dot whatever domain names that you can host with one single hosting account. So it's just like there's there's just no other choice. Um, I mean, I, even if they were not a sponsor, I would still highly recommend. I did, actually. I always recommended Arvix ever since I've discovered them uh, before they became a sponsor. So uh, be sure and check them out. The, um, the other thing is they have host uh, web host side applications that you can install with one click. So there, there's some great ones. I don't know all of them, but the one that we use a lot is uh, Dolph, Boonex Dolphin, Dolphin, which is like a, um, a social network. You can create your own social network for any type of um, special interest group or whatever for your, your church group or your golf team or whatever the heck you want. And you create your own like Facebook. And anyway, it installs with one click. And if you ever have any issues or situation or you know troubleshooting with them, Arvix will help you uh, diagnose what's wrong and, and fix it. They're they're excellent about support. So yeah, they they emphasize customer support, yeah. which is probably the best. As well as <laughs> as well as reliability. So we really want to thank uh, Arvix. It's a r v i x e dot com, and you can always go to our site breadtv dot com and um, and click on the show notes, and you'll find all of our sponsors listed there. Mm-hmm. And Dropbox. Dropbox. Tell us about Dropbox. Dropbox is the uh, f- well, it's uh, backup, backing up your data and uh, and you use it to share documents or um, what's the other thing? There's three things. Yeah, it's data synchronization, data backup, and accessing your data from anywhere. Yeah. And um, it just does everything. It's it's what it is. It's such a simple little idea that. Um, it's hard to describe because I don't think there's anybody else really. There's hardly anything out there that will do all of this. You can get backup solutions from one company, and you can get you know certain types of data synchronizing through all kinds of other convoluted software. But Dropbox is super super simple. You install this software, and this they have a version of the software for every platform: Ubuntu, Linux, Macintosh, um, uh, Windows iPhone, Android, you name it. I mean, pretty much every device out there, you install the little Dropbox program, and what it does is it synchronizes all your files. It's re- it's like your personal file server out on the web. Mm-hmm. So, But not only does it keep your files out on the web, but it also keeps them on your local hard drive because hard drives are really cheap now. You know, new computers are coming with 200, 250 gigabyte hard drives. So it's very easy for you to have all your data copied on all your computers. So right. if you like, if we have you know whatever, say you ha- between your laptops and your desktops, you might have four computers, and not to mention your office and so on. You have four or five computers. Well, now you have four or five copies of all your important irreplaceable items: your documents, your records, your family photos and family right. videos. Um, you've got copies of them on every computer, synchronized automatically. As soon as you save it, within seconds, it's on every computer. And it's also out on the web. And you can, so obviously backed up. Because it's synchronized, it's backed up. And um, you can also access it from any web browser anywhere. Yeah, we use it together and we bought the premium plan. And so, you know, whenever I want to save something, I put it into the proper folder and it's always there wherever I go. And it's just... A great product, and we have the. I mean, you get two gigabytes for free, but we we you, you know, we love it so much. We absolutely, it's mission critical. We absolutely rely on it. It is our file server for every document um, or or any type of thing, whether it's a movie or music or anything that's really important to us. We put it on Dropbox. We have a hundred gigabyte account. Plus, by referring people, you can get more free space up to the maximum of one hundred and sixteen gigabytes, and that's what we have. So we yeah. we live for for Dropbox. Yeah. And our uh, the next sponsor is Mountain Rose Herbs. So tell us about Mountain Rose Herbs because you're the expert on these things. Well, it's mountainroseherbs.com, and uh, it's a, a co-op that specializes in um, natural and organic ingredients um, and products. And you can get anything from um, like herbs, as the name describes or says and the you can also get like uh, bulk uh, superfoods like lychee berries and um, I've gotten turned on my family to like powdered spinach for the young kids and you stick it in their ketchup and uh, they sell like a pound for like seven dollars or something but it goes a long way 
and uh, and most of all their products are um, um, you know geared for sustainable agriculture so um, you're buying you're basically voting with your dollars and this is a great place to put your dollars because you're gonna get natural organic ingredients and uh, they're all uh, at a very affordable price so, so it's, it's a great great natural uh, organic local uh, maybe not local but sustainable agriculture right and superfoods that are full of antioxidants so these are these are the foods that you you know, if you study and you google superfoods you learn you get an education about all this stuff that um, and then you learn about all these amazing superfoods, these super super anti high o- antioxidant foods that you should be eating. And then you go, okay, but where do I buy it? You know, you, you can go to the the, you know, the the specialty stores that are in your area, but they're expensive. Yeah. Uh, but if you go Extremely to Mountain, extremely expensive. Very, I mean, especially like, compared to MountainRoseHerbs.com. I mean, amazing. The so difference. You, you go to mountainroseherbs.com and you can order it in even in bulk and it's shipped right to your door hassle free like any shopping online and you're guaranteed the quality and the price you yeah. can't beat it you just they can't even beat it. on the labels they put when it was harvested or when they got it and usually it's like within a month or two before that so uh, it's a great great um, place to go and shop for sure <laughs> so for your as foods. we thank our sponsors all of them and uh again you can go to our site bread tv b-r-e-d-t-v.com and click on show notes and you'll see uh links to all of these in case you didn't remember um yes, what they are thanks <laughs> so all right back to robbie and we've lost him let's see if i can connect us up <laughs> just got cut off there he is is he back? Is he back? Is hey. He... There you are. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> hey, let me bring you back up here. <laughs> Double size. We, we're going to supersize you. See, now you're under the, <laughs> the bread logo, and now we'll go full screen. There you are. <clears throat> Purple is the color of the day. <laughs> <laughs> See, we, if we had a chroma key thing, we could make you like uh, like with the, um, what is that? The Ferris, London, the London background. The London wheel behind you, or or you could have the, Paris, oh, yeah, the yeah. Eiffel Tower. <laughs> <laughs> you were... Uh, how were you? You were doing something before, uh, with your face or something on. What, what was it that you were using? Oh, he has. I'll show you the special effects with your webcam software. He's talking oh. about. That's oh, I've never seen that. It's software that comes with the webcam. Some of them. Oh, um, what? Like throw something in front of your face or something? Yeah, yeah. Show show us some of those effects that he he's talking about. Can you do that? You know, you know what I'm talking about. The web. Can you hear us? Uh, just are. vaguely. Oh, okay. The um, he's talking about the webcam effects. You know the um, the special effects you do with the webcam. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, uh, from Arcsoft Magic. Is that did that come with your webcam that software? It sure did. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, I've never yeah, seen that. Yeah. I thought it was kind of a lot good. of them do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we were talking about uh, what was it before the. The break? Mm, don't remember. But you know, speaking of webcams, the um, one of the things that we want to do is we want to be able to have multiple guests because obviously this works really well. You can see, yeah, you can see what it looks like um, because we, you know, you're like bigger than life right here, and we can hear you crystal clear, like you're sitting right here. So having a guest via Skype is phenomenal. But what we'd really like is having multiple guests on at the same time, so we could actually have a panel. If I, it would be ideal is if you know if I could alt tab and switch over to the the person who's speaking at the moment and have like four or five different people on Skype at the same time, but it's not it's not as easy as it sounds to set up. They're um, you know technically so what some people have done is they'll have like four different computers, each one with a version of Skype running on it, and then use some sort of a switcher. But that like there's this thing called a TriCaster. It's very expensive. Um, and we, but we're trying to do it, you know, on a shoestring budget without investing ten thousand dollars on a little piece of hardware. Can you hear so, me? Can you hear me? Okay. Sure. Can. Yeah, yeah, he can. So um, anyway, Skype. Now Skype has announced recently that there's uh, that they are in beta testing of a version that has multiple uh, video conferences at you know, at one time. But I haven't been able to get it to work. I've tried it on several computers and several different webcams, and I have not been able to get it to work. Um, I mean, I couldn't even get it to work on a one-to-one call, so I think it's very, it maybe like closer to alpha than beta. 
Now there's a product called Uvu, which is O O V O O, um, and it it works okay. And you can you can if you pay a fee, a monthly fee, you can do multiple callers. But it doesn't do full screen. It doesn't do this. This simple thing of just having you full screen on the thing. It only brings it up into a, a square. You know, pretty much kind of like that. So it would have you know just. That's like full screen as far as it's concerned, which is, you know, as you can see, it's okay, but it's not as good as being able to really see you like this. Yeah, like, I mean, you, it almost looks like you're right here with us, practically. So th yeah, so that's kind of like, for what we want to do, that's almost like a deal breaker for for using Uvu. So anyway, if anybody has an idea, one, one of the things we were doing is we were having multiple computers, and we were using trying to use a KVM switch, and now that's a... Uh, I don't know if you know what, if anybody knows what a KVM switch is, but it's a keyboard video monitor KVM, and you you it's got a special switch that switches your monitor uh, between multiple computers, and that sounded like a really good idea, but it, it, in practice it didn't work very well, and then it wasn't always reliable, and now it stopped working altogether. I don't know, maybe it's just the the switch I have. I don't know, but it might be that we need to have identical, like four identical hardware computers, because yeah. if the if it switches the the heart the computer and this big monitor um, switch from one computer to another to another, it might really screw up the signal because it's coming in at a slightly different resolution yeah, and things it could like be too that. Many variables. So if anybody is uh, technical and has some suggestions, definitely send us uh, an email about that. Mm -hmm. So, so um, I think you had mentioned earlier before the broadcast about you wanted to share something about the Gay Pride or say something about that? Oh, this, sure, I was just, month just month asking about month. you guys. I mean, you're due your pride very soon, isn't it? Oh, it's in June. It's this uh, month. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I'm not sure when, actually. I think it's the last weekend of the month. And what they're talking about is gay pride. Gay pride. <laughs> For those who are not in the gay loop, <laughs> the gay fruit loop. But uh, <laughs> gay pride is June. It's usually the end of June. Yeah, it would probably be like the weekend of the 25th of June this in New York City. That's the weekend. Let me see. <laughs> We're so out of it. But we've been several times. It's in New York City. It's, you know, enormous. Have you have you been here for that? No, I've never been. Are you going to no. are you going to be here? Is that the date? Are you going to be here over that date or no? Cuz see New York has many gay pride. The big one in Manhattan the yeah. thing is, at the end of the month, but they have the Brooklyn one and all yeah. But over when's town. the big one in Manhattan? That uh, are you going to be here for that? Uh, I don't. I don't think so. Yeah. What you're going to be here the first two weeks of July? Is that right? Uh, well, I'll get to you guys on the thirtieth. And yeah, 30th. it's on the twenty seventh. Oh no! You got to come a few days early. <laughs> 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 you got. It won't be gay without you. <laughs> it won't be gay enough. <laughs> <laughs> and Ricky Martin is asking already. Where is Robbie going to be there? Because if Robbie's not there, I'm not going to be there. <laughs> How's he doing anyway? Ricky and Elton. <laughs> I don't know. You guys got Elton, but we got Ricky. I'm sure he's happy now that he's come out and yeah. lifted that weight off his shoulders. Oh, uh, can you imagine? Yeah. Well, I like the I like the way he always answered those questions. He always said. Um, you know, basically, not in so many words, he would say, what difference does it make? He never said no. He right. never said yes. He never said no. Because he never said no, we kind of knew it was a yes. But but I love that he never said no. He never denied it. And I love the way he answered was like, why? <laughs> when You know, before I was out, I, would, I used to say things like that. If someone would ask me, are you gay? I'd say, why? Are you asking me on a date? It didn't right. matter who was asking, you know, like, why are you interested in dating me? Because if you're not interested in dating me, it's not really that relevant, especially in the workplace. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a great comeback. I forgot about why? that. Why? You want to date me or who? somebody wants to date me? Why would someone want to know, you know, mm -hmm. what happens in, in that I think in uh, regards to that as well, I've always, I've always been up front, you know, I've been always yeah. gay proud. Uh, if they wanted to beat me up at school, you know, <laughs> it's their choice. But no, I was always gay, happy, and proud. Yeah. I mean, the girls used to always be around me, pre protecting me. The girls, you know, the, the big, guys are saying, the big, I'm lucky. <laughs> the big muscle girls. <laughs> well, you have always yeah. been very, very with their gay. pull cues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when, when, when people ask, what, like in chat or something, they'll, they'll say, uh, 
uh, if somebody says they're gay, I'll say, um, how gay are you? That always throws them off. They're like, what? Oh, are you very, very gay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's just like, just to throw them off. They're like, what, what does that mean? <laughs> But, um, well, talking about that subject, I mean, uh, when was it? Two days ago, I mean, some students went to a bar. I mean, they worked for the um, the government, but they were all gay. So they decided to go to a, a bar, and they basically put posts up about winning an award and everything, uh, regards to the gay community. And the bar manager came over and said, could you take the poster down? I mean, some of the straight people started... Um, you know, saying nasty words to them, and they ended up basically being refused to serve, you know, being served their food. So they were told to leave, basically. Wow. I mean, it was shocking. Uh, well, yeah, I that mean, is there was 60 of them. In 2010. 60, 60 people? <laughs> 60 people, yeah, at a party, you know, booked, paid the deposit, and the and manager they... turned around and said, I'm afraid um, we're going to have to take the prices down. And you know, stop the party. Wow. I mean, it was spin all over the news. I mean, I you can imagine say. it's already hit Facebook. Yeah, I, I was mean, gonna say that I, is, if that's on the, I mean, on the news and on Facebook, that that manager is probably no longer employed. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that, yep, definitely. That, He's been let go. Yeah, and said. the restaurant <laughs> might not be around for long either because yeah. that's gonna be a damage control. They're gonna have to. Uh, those days are over that yeah. they can get away with that kind of stuff. And I say sometimes oh, that, it's better cool. for that stuff to come out, and because that way I know, it I, sets you know, a I'm not going to go there, you know. Well, and it and sets neither a precedent for other restaurants. They'll say, "Oh no, you can't treat people like that because that'll kill our business." You know, the owners are aware. Look what happened to that place. You know, you do not mistreat anybody, any group. So it's oh, very, that's right. you know, and you know, uh, but, talking about that subject as well. Sorry. Oh, I was. I was gonna no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, what sorry. were you gonna say? What were you gonna say? And then you know I'm what gonna... I was saying about a subject as well. Um, me as a p- promoter in Essex. I mean, I I decided to launch a um, a gay night at this venue because they wanted me to. Uh, at that same over place. time, I realized. Sorry. Not the same place. A different place. No, 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 no. Okay, okay, okay. No, in uh, <laughs> somewhere in Essex. I mean, they wanted me to do a gay night and. Um, I said, sure, you know, but you need to be in it with me, you know. And they decided, well, we don't want nothing to do with, to do with it. We want you to do it all. So I said, what, well, you know, you've got to be part of it as well. You've got to be Behind part it. of the gay community, provide gay, you know, gay community with everything, you know. And they weren't willing to do to do that, you know. They wanted me mm-hmm. to do it, you know, just bring the customers in. And I thought, well, it's not worth it then because I know you want to make money out of us but you've got to uh, you know, accept us if we're being a gay community and accept us in your club they didn't want to I mean, they, they were funny about that <laughs> yeah like well, well like they want a gay night that, that packs the place on a Sunday when it's dead but they don't want to promote it to any of their other customers because they don't want to hurt the Monday through that's Saturday right. crowd right. Yeah, that's right yeah they want it both ways yeah. Good. Well, let them lose. Let them lose. Let them be the dead one, and the and one then, across the street is promoting it. You know, so, yeah, because I mean, you, you have to set the standard, and you have to say this is this is the way it works. We ha- this is our money. You know, you want our money, then you better treat us with respect as any other group. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a great Thank thing you. with uh, who I work with. I work with um, the Chicago Rock Cafs. I mean, we have uh, quite a few uh, over the UK. And um, they're always wanting me to launch gay things, you know, gay nights for the gay community. You know, they accept us. All their venues accept us. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, everyone I've launched with them, you know, they're willing to put in money, you know, put in acts. And, I mean, yeah. it's perfect. I mean, they're great. And that's why um, the one I'm doing in Chelmsford in Essex has been running for almost eight years. Mm. So, wow. That's, that's cool. That's great. Now, sort of on a, s- a slightly different tangent, but similar, similarly on the on the gay thing, we um, came up with an idea for uh, another show that we're going to launch. We're going to work on launching. It's going to be uh, very easy to do, but it's going to be. I think it's going to be really, really good and really compelling, because <clears throat> what has happened is um, we've had fun playing around with Skype. And on Skype, you can just talk to random strangers. It's kind of like that chat roulette thing. You've heard of that. 
where you just chat sure. with a random person. You just connect it to a random person. But we've used Skype uh, for years, and um, actually, it was like maybe four years ago we, when we started really playing with it intensely. And uh, like every morning, we just turn it on while we're having breakfast and we play with it. And we met all these contacts um, because we put the word gay. And if you put the word gay anywhere in your profile, they're going to find you because the first thing a gay person does is they search on that word. So they find you. And then if you put yourself in Skype me mode, they call you. So we would just talk to all these random people all over the world. So we ended up, most of them are like uh, young gay guys in their 20s, you know, 20 somethings. And but you never know. They could be in North Korea or Cuba or Qatar or is it um, you know it Morocco. could be anywhere. Morocco, Turkey, is a big one. Um, Russia. Yeah. Uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, Saudi Arabia. <laughs> you know, all over the Middle East, Iran, North Korea. Did I say that? Everywhere. I mean, just unbelievable stories. And these are. This is not like London. Is not like New York. It's <laughs> very very different. And you hear the stories of what it's like to be 24 and gay in Morocco. And their stories are unbelievably compelling. That's why when he saw you with the, the webcam effect that blacks out your eyes, he's like, that's what we need. Sure. That would be perfect, actually, for these guys, you know, because we probably will not be able to put them on video sometimes. But anyway, the, the bottom line is we want to actually have them on as guests via Skype and interview them about what it's like to be in your 20s and gay in your country. And it, it doesn't have to be necessarily Iraq. It could also be uh, Moscow, you know, in Russia. I mean, there are places where, you know, it's better, it's worse, what's good, what's bad. I mean, they may have, you know, maybe there are a lot of gays and they're not necessarily persecuted or murdered, but they might not have any gay bars or they have the only underground clubs. Even places yeah. like, like Russia, like Singapore and... There's, it's. I think it will be very, very interesting for a gay audience to hear it firsthand from a 24-year-old what it's like to be gay in your city. Yeah. So it's called, we decided to call it um, gay, gay Life, Life Now. Now. So it's going to be called Gay Life Now, and we, we registered the domain. So it will, .com. It's not there yet. Mm -hmm. It's just an idea in development. But it's going to be called GayLifeNow.com will be this mm -hmm. the website. Well, the reality is that in most places, with the exception of London, New York, Paris, maybe, uh, you can't walk down the street holding hands with your partner. And <laughs> so um, it'll be interesting to hear people's, uh, you know, Views on stories, that. yeah, the stories about what it's like, sure. and I think it'd be very enlightening too, because not only um, do we have to enlighten the world about you know what's what's right, like you're talking about that restaurant and the story about how it's right to to treat people properly, but also what's not so right, you know what's going on, because people and, and not just a gay audience, this is for anybody, anybody who cares about human humanity and human beings and human rights. Um, to realize that, oh my gosh, I never knew they did that to gays in Jamaica. You know, I had no idea. In fact, I might not go to Jamaica. I might cancel my trip to Jamaica after hearing what they do to gays in Jamaica or whatever. You yeah, know, as an example. Like, I don't want to go to Jamaica personally anymore. Yeah, I mean, I've been there many times and I love it. That's just one example, it. but it, it's it's not necessarily to boycott countries necessarily, but, it, but just the idea of um, making people aware of it because you never know what audience you're going to reach. They could be straight or gay, closeted or out, and they may be people in a position of influence, whether it's corporate or government or tourists or whatever. People can actually influence things for the better if they know what's going on. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's yeah, this huge I mean, culture uh, of, of hush, 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 keep it secret, and nobody knows how bad it is. And, and and they also say crazy, stupid things like there are no gays in Honduras. There are no gays in um, Afghanistan or whatever. That, just nonsense. What, what was it? What was the country where the the um, the president is? Iraq. Iraq. Oh, yeah, uh, Iraq. Iran. I'm sorry. Iran. Yeah. The president of Iran said there are no gays here. Yeah. Yeah. He's wrong because I've talked to a lot of his gay uh, countrymen right there and they'll tell you. But they, they don't want their face on camera or their name or city or anything because they will probably get murdered. Yeah. Well, we've talked to people I mean, from Iran, I think it is, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. that are gay. And, um, yeah, like he said, they're very compelling stories. And, um, I mean, they told us candidly, so we would have to figure out a way to... 
And even and also it's places that not disclose their identity. Where the opposite can be true too, where it's not nearly as bad as it's made out to be. That's another story, you know. Like there are gays in China, and there's Thailand. you know, <laughs> well yeah, I mean there are obviously the opposite. Thailand, Amsterdam, you know, it's like okay, whatever. Uh, they persecute you if you're not gay. No, <laughs> just kidding. No, but like in China, you know, it's actually maybe more open than some people think. So there, there's, you know, it, it'll be a very, very cool reality check. Yeah. Reality check. That's what we should call it. Gay reality check. Yeah. Well, I think <laughs> that it'll uh, bring into light the, the differences in the culture itself and why they act and do the things that they do. So mm -hmm. from many different views, it'll be fun to listen Definitely. Yeah, I think it's going to be a great idea to do something like that anyway. I mean, um, basically going back to when I, I mean, I didn't really come out until, cool, I must have been about 20, 21. I mean, obviously I was talking to you guys back then, you know, but really no one knew about, you know, my sexuality. And then to go to London, you know, Soho was the only place really you could hold a hand. As soon as you walked out of Soho, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, for people that don't know Soho, I mean, it's one of the, the gayest places to go in the entire, in of London. the UK, I would say. You're talking about know. Soho but, neighborhood um, of London, not not the Soho in New York. Right. The original Soho. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, to do that, to hold someone's hands, I mean, and be accepted for it was amazing. But as soon as you left Soho, straight away, you'd leave, you know, let go of hands. There won't be no gay contact whatsoever. But I mean, you know, <laughs> we're slowly being accepted in, you know, uh, basically London. I mean, I've read, I've read quite a few reviews still in New York. I don't know if it's true. I mean, recently, uh, regards to a boy that got attacked, you know, leaving a nightclub. I mean, um, stupid enough leaving on his own. I mean, just stupid people, straight people. Not No offense to straight people. I mean, I love them. I mean, I've got, I mean, I have hundreds of them come to my clubs. They accept the customers for who they are. But I mean, you get these random people that get drunk, you know, and they they think they're all that hard lads. And they, you know, they start picking on someone and it ends up, you know, leading to abuse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I know it happens here often. I mean, um, one of the famous drag queens, uh, Aviance, she was uh, mugged because she was she's a drag queen and she leaves these clubs late at night and they attacked her. But the most uh, the one that really sticks to my mind happened maybe a year or two ago, and it was these two guys walking. I think it was either in Queens or Brooklyn, hand in hand. And uh, one of the brothers, they were both mugged because of they were holding hands, and one of them actually died. But the the compelling part about it was that they were actually brothers walking together home. Yeah, they were brothers, brothers holding hands. And that's just sad, you know. That you can't, can't, right? that was, you're talking about yeah, different now. Yeah, there's a different brothers. story. A different story where they were just brothers from a different culture. They weren't even gay. They were holding hands. It reminds me of the days when in Detroit when I went to school in Michigan and. And uh, there were all these redneck factory workers who were anti-Japanese because the Japanese cars are taking away our jobs. And they wanted to beat up some Japanese. And they, they found some guy in a bar, and he was Asian, but he wasn't even Japanese. I mean, not, not like it would matter, but he wasn't even Japanese. That's the irony. You know, they're just so retarded. They just want to – just anger and hate, and there's no sense at all. And, and it, uh, it's just uh, no. I think the the website you're going to be doing. I mean, it's going to be amazing. I mean, it's not just that as well. Um, I mean, people that live in the UK, you know, it's good to I'll advertise it as well. Probably get onto your, you know, your website in America. Oh, yeah. I mean, for going over in other countries and you know, looking at gay, you know, sites elsewhere. I know. So your parents are like saying, "Oh, what's that?" I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's, it's global. I mean, it's the it's the web. It's going to be the website for the show. Of course, it'll be a show. We'll do it on a regular basis, but it'll be educational for people. Gays in every single country. It might be interesting because somebody might, somebody who's gay in um, Vietnam might uh, learn about what it's like to be gay in the neighboring country right next door, you know, Burma or Thailand or something. So people, I think it's going to educate gay people and straight people, all people all over the sure. world about what it's like. And this is a topic that, you know, it's not like racism. It's it's the invisible minority. You don't know when someone's gay unless they're going to tell you um, or unless it's obvious. Yeah. But right. anyway, we have got, I hate to cut it short because this conversation is so great, but we're out of time. Yeah. <laughs> So, thanks um, for joining us. Yeah, thanks so much oh, for joining thank you us. For having me. Probably can't wait to see you. <laughs> yes. We're going to have so much fun. So, um, all right, thanks everybody. Bye bye. We'll thank see you. you tomorrow. Take care. Stay tuned. <laughs> Ciao. <laughs>